going to speak to you tonight a little bit about the Committee of Adjustment. Thank you, Bob. A little bit about the Committee of Adjustment, the roles of staff, the committee, and planning. Whoops, I need my clicker. One second. There we go. The Committee of Adjustment is a, is a decision maker. In the City of Ottawa, we have three panels, each made up of five individuals. The committee is established under the Planning Act, but appointed by City Council. The Committee of Delegation prends des décisions. In Ottawa, there are three groupes géographiques, so urban, suburban, and rural. Chacun composé de cinq membres. The committee makes decisions on four or five types of applications, but the major or the most common applications are the minor variance and the consent to sever. The minor variance is an opportunity to make small changes to zoning performance standards, and you cannot add a use through the committee of adjustment. In this uh, before and after scenario, uh, we see a reduced side yard setback that allowed the, uh, the property owner to build a side yard addition. A consent to sever is the process that's used to create a new lot for building, as well as easements or rights of way. Une demande d'autorisation doit être présentée pour créer un nouveau lot, pour créer une série de lots, une emprise ou bien des servitudes. Donc à ce point-ci, nous allons contempler un scénario qui démontre le processus de morcellement d'un bois à l'autre. We would now like to walk you through a typical severance process uh, using the example of Mrs. Jones, who would like to sever her side yard to create a new building lot. As a first step before making her application, Mrs. Jones will pre-consult with a development information officer and the committee of adjustment planner. She'll also be strongly encouraged to speak to her counselor, to her neighbors, and to her community association. When Mrs. Jones submits her application, she'll complete, she will submit a number of other documents to make the application complete. These will include a cover letter explaining the proposal, a draft reference plan indicating the parts that will be created, a parcel abstract page or PIN that shows all of the registered owners, as well as the authorization of all of those property owners. Mrs. Jones will post a sign on her property She'll be given the sign by committee staff, but she's responsible for posting it. Notice will be given to her neighbors within a 60 meter radius, and the application will be circulated to planning staff and other commenting agencies, including school boards, Bell, Hydro, uh, utility agencies, and the ward councillor. Donc à ce point-ci, le demandeur affiche euh, une aff une, un avis sur le terrain euh, qui est fourni par le comité de délégation. Uh, puis on va le voir à la prochaine diapo. Ensuite, un avis est distribué aux voisins en dedans de 60 mètres à la ronde. Et aussi, la demande est transmise aux parties intéressées qui pourraient se prononcer. Uh, par exemple, le personnel d'urbanisme de la ville, conseiller du quartier, aussi les services tels que Bell, Rogers, etc. This is an example of the sign that Mrs. Jones will post. Uh, you can see that it includes a brief description of the application, who to contact for more information, as well as the date and time of the Committee of Adjustment hearing. At the hearing, Mrs. Jones will present her application, or she may have an agent to do so for her. They'll typically use visual aids to assist. They'll explain the relief that they're seeking and will answer any questions that the committee may have. Following Mrs. Jones's or presentation, any interested parties, including her neighbors, will be able to speak for or against the application on land use planning grounds. My hands are full here with all of these items. Uh, so the Committee of Adjustment makes its decisions based on land use planning grounds. And it's important that as a commenting party, uh, you stick to those types of grounds when you're making your presentation. So some of the comments that would be typically uh, persuasive for the committee would include uh, something like, the creation of this narrow lot will be out of character for my neighborhood. Un exemple d'un commentaire approprié à faire au comité de dérogation serait, par exemple, le garage à l'avant ne convient pas au caractère du quartier. Or they often heard, the proposal is appropriate and I fully support it. 
other uh, some aspects of the proposal that may be of, of concern to the neighbor uh, may not be uh, so much land use planning grounds and the committee is uh, is told what it can base its decisions on uh, by the Planning Act some examples of less persuasive comments would be uh, the proposed development will lower my property values an example d'un commentaire qui serait inapproprié pour le comité de dérogation serait a new immeuble comprendra des logis alloués. Or, I don't think a flat roof is a good design choice. After the application has been presented and all parties have had an opportunity to speak, uh, the committee will make its decision. In some cases, it will make its decision right away, and in others, it will hold, uh, reserve the decision for further discussion. Mrs. Jones and interested parties, including the city, will have the opportunity to appeal for 20 days to the Ontario Municipal Board. Mrs. Jones will then have one year to satisfy any conditions that are placed on the consent. Examples of conditions on a consent might include a requirement to demolish an existing dwelling or a proof that a site servicing brief has been prepared. Une fois que les conditions sont respectées, le personnel du comité de dérogation délivre un certificat d'autorisation. Madame Jones, ensuite, a deux ans pour enregistrer le nouvel acte, euh, faute de quoi l'autorisation expirera. Mrs. Jones will have two years to register the new deed or the consent will lapse. And this is a before and after of an example of what could be Mrs. Jones' house if she were to sever off the side yard and build a new dwelling. So that concludes our presentation. Uh, we're keen to hear any questions that you have, and I'm excited to have you help me build the next planning primer elective, uh, rather than doing it all myself. Okay, uh, nous allons maintenant procéder à notre période de questions et réponses. Si vous avez des questions, comme la dernière fois, donnez les cartes à Justina. Qui va les ramasser. If you have any questions, uh, raise your hand with the question card and we'll collect them and start reading them. So we'll go with our first question from the, uh, from the internet. So, um, can I contact the planner after the consultation period ends? Uh, you can, but in the committee of adjustment scenario, it's a pretty quick turnaround with uh, two weeks between applications. So. Uh, you need to be quick or the application may have been heard. Okay, next question. How would I find out who my committee of adjustment planner is? Uh, you could call 311 and uh, they have a list of who the committee of adjustment planners are for each of the panels. Okay. Uh, where is the Committee of Adjustment located? Uh, the committee hearings are in the chamber at Ben Franklin Place, and the committee staff is located there as well. Okay. Can I contact the planner after the consultation period ends? Asked and answered. Oh. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Getting mixed up here. Okay. Can I review submitted applications online? Uh, yes, you can. This is actually something uh, new for the Committee of Adjustment. It's pretty exciting since uh, the planning branch has been doing it uh, since about 2008. But now all uh, applications are posted on the website uh, as, long, as well as the supporting documentation, uh, which cuts down on a lot of travel uh, back and forth to Ben Franklin Place. Okay. How long does the entire process take? Uh, the process takes, if there's an appeal, uh, that's a difficult question to answer, but without an appeal, it's about 12 to 14 weeks. Okay, uh, next question. Would it be appropriate for the Committee of Adjustment to ask about plans for, I think, trees on a lot or snow clearing? That is an interesting question. <laughs> um, I don't think it's within the Committee's mandate to speak to trees uh, to their retention. Um, JC, as tenure with the committee, has been more recent than mine, so perhaps he can add to that. Uh, we're trying to make a move towards asking for that type of information up front and have trees uh, part of the, uh, the, the plans that are submitted with the applications. Unfortunately, at this point, uh, it's 
not mandated by the uh, Committee of Adjustment, and uh, but we are working towards uh, um, making sure that the, that information is there to make sure that the proposed development does not impact impact the trees negatively. Uh, okay. Do I need to have a planner, lawyer, or architect represent me? The uh, Committee of Adjustment process is designed to be accessible to uh, the individual landowners. That being said, depending on the complexity of the application itself, sometimes it becomes a good idea, uh, depending on your level of expertise or, or comfort with presenting or uh, having an application, it, it become it might be a good idea to have some sort of representation either at the committee or in preparing your applications. It depends on the complexity of the, the project or the level of uh, complexity. Okay, 60 meter notice is not enough in areas with large lots. Could notification process account for that? Sixty month or sixty, 60 meter? meters? Sixty meters. So that's true. In a lot of cases, <laughs> no, uh, sixty meters could meters. be on on the property, for example. Uh, but I believe the sixty meters comes from the Planning Act. I it does. The sixty meters is in the Planning Act. So uh, while a municipality could certainly extend that, I don't think that's uh, been considered at this time. Okay. Who is responsible for the conditions being satisfied? Uh, the Committee of Adjustment staff and the Secretary Treasurer in specific must be satisfied by the applicant that the conditions have been satisfied. Okay. So they must provide proof. Follow-up question, how does the neighborhood best address any issues? How does the neighborhood best address any issues? Um, it's two-parter, this one. With the, I wonder if that means the, with the fulfilling of conditions? Perhaps that came from the web. Hmm. Perhaps. <laughs> oh, okay. With the fulfilling of conditions. That is a good question. You've stumped me. We'll look um, into it. <laughs> we can look into it. I guess if I, if I were to give an answer, I would say that it would be uh, just by following up with 311 or with committee staff. Uh, but otherwise, I'm really, I'm not sure. We'll follow up. Okay, so I think this is our last question, unless there's, oh, there you go. What is the test for minor variance? You know. Is that a big one? No, it's not. It's a, <laughs> I know it now, but I always think of it because when on my job interview, I was asked that question, and I could only come up with three. And John Smith, who's here with us tonight, said, I never forget the fourth. <laughs> so the four are, uh, does it maintain, maintain the general intent and purpose of the official plan? Does it maintain the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw? Is it desirable for the development of the property? And is it minor? Okay. <laughs> I can't remember which one I couldn't come up with. Probably the orderly development. So a question from our live audience. Is a staff report recommending uh, for or against prepared for the application? Uh, no, not in the case of committee adjustment applications. There is a staff planner there, and they make a comment, um, but it's... It's more often than not no comment, and it's very rarely a strong position, although it can happen, uh, but it's, it's never a recommendation.